Good morning. How are you this beautiful Sunday morning that we can all be in the house of the Lord and uh, worship Him? Uh, hopefully you had a good week. Hopefully you got some rest and I uh, see we have some visitors. We have two very important visitors today, uh, Jeff and Jean Swanson, all the way from Alaska. And uh, they're down uh, sharing about what the mission is going on up in Alaska. And so uh, Jeff will be speaking with us this morning and uh, sharing, us, sharing with us some slides and some different things. But it is a, it is a great day to be here, a great day to, uh, to just sit in his presence, be in this church, and, uh, and uh, continue to, uh, to grow in faith. Amen? All right. Well, some of the things that uh, are coming up, as you can see on the back of your bulletin, some of the different things. Uh, of course, we every single week we have Sunday school, and we have followed by coffee and donuts. Please stop by. Fit in where you can get in. Uh, it's, it's a good time. Right now we're going through Galatians and uh, studying line by line a little bit what's going, what the Lord of God has to tell us there. Uh, so please come. This week you, you see we have council meeting on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And then on Wednesday, we have Peace Corps, and then the uh, junior choir practice switch is at 6.30. But then there's a, there's a new thing. That, uh, it's 7 o'clock. There's going to be a worship choir practice. And so anyone who would like to be part of a choir and just spend time using our voice to, to praise the Lord, please meet us here at 7 o'clock on Wednesday as we, uh, as we form a uh, a new choir, all right? So and then you can see the rest of them. The Blood Mobile will be here and on and on and on all the way down, all the way through uh, uh, the t November 2nd primary election voting here at church. Um, thank you so much for allowing Kelly and I and the kids to be off last week. We had a fun time. We went west. We got to see stuff that we don't see in Kansas. Believe me, it's a good thing we don't see those things in Kansas. <laughs> But we, it was great to come home and to come into the normalcy of Kansas and go, ah, oh, feels good. So um, as you see behind me, there's some flowers up there. Uh, yesterday you, we had Brad Barnhart's uh, memorial service, and uh, the family left those for us. Um, and so uh, that, is on, that is in memory of Brad Barnhart. Last thing before we bow for a word of prayer. As you saw when you came in, there is a sign up on the table for nursery, okay? The nursery is going to be open. We do have someone in there. We will do it after the children's message. I will excuse those that want to go to nursery. Five to five and under. Five and under. Okay, not, it's not children's church yet, but... Five and under can go to a nursery, and there will be someone there. If you could please take a turn signing up for being in the nursery. All right? That's all I'm going to say. So, with that being said, are you ready just to sit in his presence and worship him today? I know I am. So, let's bow for a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, I come before you with my church family, and I do thank you and I praise you for this very special day. Thank you for bringing Pastor Jeff and Jean here, and thank you for their travels. Thank you for the ministry that they have up there in Alaska. And Lord, would you continue as we are in this place and in this time, uh, let us worship you, Lord. It says, in, says in, 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 in your word that where two or three are gathered in your name, you're in the midst, and so you are here. And so I thank you, Lord. Continue to open our hearts and minds to the truth that you have in your word. We love you, and we praise you, and we will always worship you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please stand and grab your, your worship folder, and let's turn to page, I believe, 22. Yes, 22. Make me a servant. We're going to say it through two times.
let us turn to the Lord and confess our sin. Dear God, I come to you as humbly as I know how. I confess my sins, those known and unknown. Lord, you know I am not perfect, and I fall short every day of my life. But I want to take time to, to say thank you for your mercy. Thank you for my health, my family, my friends, the roof over my head, food on my table, and everything I have. Amen. It says in, in Scripture that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us also confess what we believe with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This morning's call to worship is from the 131st Psalm, where we read, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed the quiet and quieted my soul like a, like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child in its soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord for this time forth and forevermore. Let us pray. O God, the helper of all who call upon you, have mercy upon us and give eyes of faith to see your Son that we may follow him on the way follow him on the way that leads to eternal life through the same Jesus Christ your son our lord who lives and reigns with you the holy spirit one god now and forever father god i come before you again and i thank you and i praise you for being who you are the king of kings the lord of lords lord i thank you for allowing us to come into your home to worship you the freedom that we have to do that Lord, I thank you for how you are working in so many people's lives. And I think of those that are healing from, from different things that are going on with their body, with, with their health, but also those that are still asking for, for help as they continue to heal. Be with those that are infected or affected by COVID-19. Be with Chuck Pettigene as he now has moved into the assisted living, Lord. Uh, give him the strength that he needs to be there. For Easton Rose, as he continues to get stronger, for Raquel Grover, Lord, as she continues to amaze us all, thank you, Lord, for the healing that you've done with her. For Shirley Ochsner, as she continues to battle the things that she's been bat battling, be with her, watch over her, provide for her, Lord. Thank you for Dolores, and, and uh, be with that whole family, as that, now she is in assisted living also. And Lord, please continue to provide, but also, Lord, uh, lift Dolores's heart and allow her to know that she's in the right place. Be with Tim Lambert and uh, those that are going, that he is the, 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 the things that he's fighting. I do lift up Gary to you and I do lift up Chris to you and I, those that are going through different things that, that they just, they're, they're waiting for their bodies to heal. Be with our medical personnel and our fire and EMS department, our law enforcement. And Lord, of course, finally I lift up our country to you, our leadership and ask that you would continue to let us be one nation under God. Lord, uh, show the leadership the things that they need to do, how they need to do it, and let them be focused on you and you alone. Protect us, watch over us, and Lord, continue to uh, keep us all focused on you as you continue to bless us, watch over us, and teach us. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The grace of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
The Old Testament lesson this morning is written in Job 38, 1 through 7. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dressed for action like a man, I will question you, and you will make it known to me. Where were you when I laid out the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have an understanding, who determined its measurements, surely you know, or who stretched the line upon it? <clears throat> On what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstones? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson is written in Hebrews 5, 1 through 10. For every high priest chosen amongst men is appointed to the act on behalf of men in retaliation or relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can gently with the arrogant and wayward since he himself was beset with weakness because this is where he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was, also, so also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he had a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he came, became the source of eternal salvation to all who obeyed him, being designated by God as a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Gary. Please stand for the gospel lesson from the Gospel of Mark. Gospel of Mark chapter 10, verse 35 through 45 as we read in Jesus' name. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you, to, want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. You are, are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or to be baptized with the baptism in which I was baptized. And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those to whom it was, has been prepared. And then the ten heard it, heard it and they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called to him and called to them and uh, called them to him and said to them, "You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles, Lord, is over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man." came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated, and if the kids want to come forward for a, a Bible time. Hey, everybody. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You want to give me that? that cross? Want to give that to me? Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to talk about this cross here in just a second. Come on up. How are you? Find a seat wherever you can sit. Everybody good? Did you have donuts? 
Were they good? Was that breakfast or was it just a snack? It's a snack. Okay, good, good, good. Well, well, I'm so glad that you're all here. And, and you know, Pastor, Pastor Jeff is going to talk about one verse coming up. And it's this very verse from Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saved the crushed in spirit. Have you, I grabbed out of my office this beautiful stained glass cross. See that? What? It, I won't drop it, don't worry, believe me. It's been broke once. Uh-huh, it's not fun to fix. But well, if you look around, we have stained glass all over, don't we? Do you see that? And when you look at the stained glass, what are some of the things that, that, you, that you see? Is it, is it all the same color? No, there's, there's some orange in there, some blue, some green. And if you look really close, some of it like this way, there's like bumps on some of it. Some of it's hard and some, see? See, look at that. They're bumpy. Some of it's smooth. See that? Isn't that cool? And if you look on the stained glass in there, each piece is different. And you look at this, same thing. Each piece is different. And, it's, and what happened is each one of these pieces of glass, just like each one of those pieces of glass, have been broken. Have been broken to fit into a certain place certain place where they were meant to be to, to make this beautiful, this beautiful cross or those beautiful windows are way back there, the, the different ones up there. I think there's even some behind me. Yep, there is. But each one of them has different things. And allow, each one of them also has different ways that it, it reflects light. But one thing about this also is that it's being held together. Do you know how this is being held together? What? By what? It's, it's, it's metal, and it's been soldered together many, 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 many different times. And, you know, when I think of stained glass, let me put this back here so we don't step on it and break it. When I think about the stained glass there and on the back, on, on the back be, behind me, just like stained glass, we need to believe that we are just as God intended us to be, full of color, sparkle, and great purpose through the grace of God. Each one of us brings a different thing to the table. Just like in this, this cross or on those windows, each one of those pieces is different and it serves a different purpose. And what's neat about the whole thing and the reason I brought out the cross was that all those things are being tied together by one thing that keeps everything united. What is that you think? You see, it's besides this cross being metal and solder, what keeps each one of us, if you look around, keeps each one of us, each just separate, different, we come together and we're being held together by Jesus, right? By Jesus, who is the one, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saved the crushed in spirit. Each one of those pieces have been broken and crushed, but when they put them together, being held together by Jesus Christ, they make a very beautiful beautiful picture, a beautiful cross. So when we all are come together, we are called to live lives where the Creator can work through us, yet where we can try to make sense of our brokenness. Should we talk to Him right, right now? Let's talk to God right now. Heavenly Father, help us to trust you and to know that you love us and want only the best for our lives. Help us to live our lives in the way that helps others want to know you better. And everybody said, amen. All right, while, you, while we sing hymn number 175, let's have a snack. 175.
Good morning. Greetings from Naknek, Alaska. Uh, my wife, Jane, raise your hand, Jane. We're glad to be here from Alaska with you all in uh, St. Francis, Kansas. This is an exciting day for us. I've known there was a, a Free Lutheran Church out here in Kansas, the only one in Kansas, right? Uh, so we've always wanted to come here and visit. Uh, Jane and I are both from Kansas. Uh, we've been staying in, in the house I grew up in over by Axtell, Kansas for about the last week or so. And uh, yesterday we drove across Highway 36. We live about three miles off of Highway 36, and so we drove 300 miles out this way to be in St. Francis, also on Highway 36. Uh, our roots go deep in Kansas. Uh, Jane is from Greenleaf. Anybody ever heard of Greenleaf? I saw lots of little towns on the highway over here, and I thought, well, I've never heard of any of those, though I lived for 20 years in Kansas, and none of you have ever heard of Greenleaf. That's 300 miles that way. And I grew up in Axtell, uh, near Marysville, north of Manhattan, about 40, 50 miles. Uh, I went to Kansas State for a year and then transferred to Bethany College in Lindsburg, and uh, my wife and I met there. She was there all four years, and I was there three years, and we graduated from Bethany College, and uh, we're headed to Lindsburg tonight to kind of revisit uh, where we met and that would be kind of fun but it is a real blessing to be here in St. Francis and to get to share with you a little bit about the ministry uh, in Alaska. I want to say uh, thank you for letting us come. Thanks Luke for giving me kind of late notice I called about coming and sharing about the work in Alaska. Thank you for that uh, opportunity and I want to take this occasion before I forget to just to say a, say a special word of thanks to all of you quilters here from St. Francis. Uh, raise your hands if you've had a part of making quilts or sending quilts to Alaska. All right, thank you so much. You, you have sent I don't know how many quilts. I, I, I'm tempted to say hundreds of quilts up to Naknek, Alaska. Where we live, some of you might be familiar with Alaska. How many of you have been to Alaska? Have you been on uh, cruises or whatever? A lot of people take cruises to Alaska. That's nowhere near where we live. That's all the fun places and the really, really pretty places. We live clear out on the west coast on the Bering Sea, 300 miles from the nearest road, uh, 300 miles from Anchorage. So it's a very remote place. It can be very cold. And the folks there really appreciate quilts. Uh, they love quilts. It's a pretty remote place and a simple place. And uh, they love quilts. They're warm and they're beautiful. And uh, so thank you for making those quilts and for sending them out. I'm going to show you some pictures. You'll see uh, some of those as well, what a blessing they've been. I want to just share one quick story to tell you how, how valuable, how much of a blessing in ministry those quilts are. Uh, we live in, a, in, again, a remote area, and there's lots of little native villages all over southwest Alaska, and all of them reachable only by plane or by boat if you're really, uh, really adventuresome. But uh, some of those villages are not open to us. Like the guy, the pastor that was there before me, he went to one particular community, uh, the community of New Stuyahawk, and uh, he got thrown out of the village because they did not want an evangelical Christian walking around town and talking to people about Jesus. And so that's considered a closed village. Uh, we landed there one time and I had a whole bunch of boxes of quilts and uh, somebody came out to the airport and wondered who we are, what we were doing there. And I said, well, we wanted to just come and share some quilts with people. We were given the red carpet. We were welcomed into the community. And we went to the high school that they had there, and I always said it was like a blue light special at Kmart. And that maybe doesn't, you guys know Kmart? When I was a kid, we used to go to Kmart, and, and they'd say, there's a blue light special over in the ladies' you know, dress area or whatever, and everybody'd flock over there, and it was a big scurry of activity and so on. Well, I was at the high school there, and all the elders uh, were at the school having lunch, and it was announced over a loudspeaker there was a free quilt giveaway uh, in the um, open area, common area of the school. And it was chaos. I mean, people, they couldn't even walk some of them. They were kind of shuffling along, but man, they were coming fast to look at those quilts. And uh, so it really gave us an open door there in New Stuyahawk, those quilts did, to meet people and to be a part of things. So quilts can open doors for ministry and open hearts. Uh, in Naknek, uh, every Christmas time, we'll invite the whole community to come and we have uh, quilts and clothing and so on and then co coffee and cookies and uh, people come and, and are so excited to get a quilt. And it's a practical help and a practical blessing 
and uh, they love it. So thank you. Thank you for all the quilts that you've made and for sending them up uh, our way in Naknik. And again, I'll show you some pictures of that here in, in just a little bit. I want to just share one Bible verse, and then we're going to get into the message after I show some slides. Try not to go too, too long. This is really dangerous. I don't see a clock in the back. So if, you, if some of you get up and start walking out, I'll know. I, I, I'm not clueless. I'll get the clue there that it's time to wrap it up. So Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. Now, let me say that again. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even the remotest parts of the earth. We feel like we live in one of the remotest parts of the earth. 300 miles southwest of Anchorage on the coast of the Bering Sea, uh, it's, it's pretty far out. We can't see Russia from there, but if you just go up the coast a little ways north, you actually can see Russia from Alaska. Sarah Palin was correct, uh, even though she took a lot of heat for that, but uh, you could. And so uh, we bring you greetings from that remote corner of America that remote corner of the earth. And uh, Jesus loves the people of Naknek, Alaska and of the other villages that we go to. And we wanna share with you a little bit about the ministry that God has raised up there. So let's pray as we begin. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we're glad in it. We rejoice, God, that you are among us. We rejoice in your grace and your mercy and your love and your forgiveness that is available to us through Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. We praise you today for Jesus, for his perfect life, his death, his substitutionary death in our place for our sins, the resurrection, the promise of the one day return of Christ, the promise that Jesus is preparing a home in heaven for us. Uh, in all the blessings we have in Christ, we give you thanks and praise. We are glad in the Lord today. Pray that you would uh, bless us during this time in the Word and uh, just getting a little vision of Alaska and what you're doing there too. So bless this time, uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Did I flip this while I was talking? My hands were running around. Sorry about that. So I want to just share with you a little bit about the Alaska mission. Um, this is a picture of Alaska overlaid on the United States. Uh, you get a picture of the size of Alaska. Uh, the main body of Alaska covers the Midwest. The Aleutian chain goes all the way out to California. The Panhandle goes clear down almost to Florida. Uh, it's a big state. It's two and a half times the size of Texas. How many times have you heard that Texas is the biggest of everything? Big state. Alaska is two and a half times the size of Texas. My son-in-law used to live in Texas. And I bought him a t-shirt for Christmas one year. It had a picture of the United States, or excuse me, a picture of Alaska and Texas inside of it. Texas looked kind of small. And the caption on the bottom of the t-shirt said, isn't Texas cute? <laughs> he never did wear that shirt. I don't know. So Alaska is a big state with big needs. You get a, this is pretty small for you to see, but uh, you can kind of see the roads, the dark little lines there in the south east corner of the state. If you've been to Alaska, you know that it's a big state, but the, the western half or two-thirds and the northern two-thirds is roadless wilderness. There are no roads. There are a lot of villages, a lot of communities, many without churches, many without churches and without pastors, uh, and just reachable only by airplane. So it's a, a very needy uh, area. You probably can't see it real well, but there is an arrow down in the, right in the little corner of Alaska there. That's Bristol Bay, uh, the salmon fishing capital of the world. And that's where we live uh, in Naknek. And this is a close-up of the area. And again, uh, too small for you to be able to see, but right in the corner of Bristol Bay up there is where we live in Naknek, King Salmon, South Naknek. We've been able to get out into a number of villages in that area. You'll get a kick out of the names of the villages. Uh, they're all Yupik Eskimo villages, and they, for whatever reason, love the letter K. So the villages we go to are Manakotik, Egagik, uh, uh, Igiagik, Manakotik, Kakanak, Kaliganik, Ekwak, Livlak, Naknek. I don't know why they love their K's so much, but those are little villages all over that part of Alaska. Uh, all of those villages, except Naknek we're at, are without pastors. 
without churches. So it's really a wonderful thing to fly out to those villages and have services, send teams out to do vacation Bible school in the villages, take quilts to those areas, pick up kids from those areas to take them to a Bible camp uh, in central Alaska. So really a, a, a blessing to go there. These are just some pictures about what it looks like. That's a picture of Bristol Bay and some of the fishing boats out there. Uh, Naknik is a community of about 500 people that uh, grows to about 10 to 15,000 in the summertime because of all the cannery workers and fishermen that come to harvest salmon. And the cannery workers are brought in from all over the world. So it's amazing we're in such a remote location in the little corner of Alaska and yet the world comes to us. We have met people from all over Eastern Europe and Central America and uh, South, Southeast Asia that come to work in the canneries just for a couple of months. Uh, it's a big industry, the fishing industry, and uh, lots of salmon. Those are uh, five to eight pound sockeye salmon. Uh, they are, uh, if you fillet those out, the meat is bright red. You buy salmon in the stores, it's kind of dull pink. Uh, this is beautiful bright red salmon. Uh, we make a lot of fillets, fill our freezer with it, and we can salmon, and we smoke salmon, and uh, my wife could give you some of the recipes. We have, we have biscuits and gravy, salmon gravy. Doesn't that sound good? A lot of people think no, but it really is really good. Uh, smoked salmon and that. So we have all the salmon that we want. There's some smoked salmon drying on a rack there. Um, we always say Alaska is a land of extremes. Where we live, it's really hard to get goods. So you'll notice the picture on the left there. You probably can't read it very well, but a gallon of milk, uh, it says there is $9.99. That's an old picture. Uh, this summer, it was $15.99 for a gallon of milk. There's a bag of apples there for $25.99. That's our little grocery center there in that middle picture. Uh, we always say Alaska is a land of extremes, extremely expensive, uh, extreme weather sometimes, and extreme needs uh, among the people. These are pictures of just the coast and the beach there where we live. Of course, there's lots of bears in Alaska. We have bears in our yard. The brown bears come out of the mountains and come down to the coast to feed on the salmon, and uh, they invade town in the summer. So we've had bears in our yard many occasions. We had a bear one time leaned against our dining room window and broke it out. And the window came crashing in on the floor. And that bear got to be a real problem. He broke windows in our garage, broke our garage door down, broke my little smokehouse down. And uh, so then uh, he passed on <laughs> shortly thereafter. So we garden a little bit and we pick berries a lot. Uh, the tundra there is just abundant with uh, blueberries and cranberries. Uh, they're actually lingonberries, which my mom would have loved because that's kind of a Swedish thing, lingonberries and salmon berries, and they're everywhere. Thousands and thousands of square miles, and it's just solid berries wherever you go. Really beautiful. So it's really neat. The native people that we live among can live a subsistence lifestyle to a large degree. They eat moose and caribou and salmon and uh, lots and lots of berries. And then sometimes they fly into Anchorage and they go to Costco. So that's how they survive. These are just a picture of blueberries and so on, fishing. Well, a lot of winter weather, a lot of snow. This is a picture we took one day on uh, October 7th. So it's full-blown winter pretty much now in, in Alaska. So we're enjoying this Kansas weather. Main reason that we're in Alaska is to preach the word of God, share the, the word, share the gospel, share the love of Jesus with people. This is our church in Naknek, Hilltop Christian Fellowship. This is the inside of the church and just preaching the word there. That's really what we want to be about, sharing the word with kids uh, at a youth group meeting there and with uh, a ladies meeting. Sunday school programs, a lot of things like you would have here. We have a big parade in the summertime after the fishing season end. It's called Fishtival. Not a creative name. So here we have some kids in a little float that we made there at Fishtival. Uh, so one of the things that we did when we got there, we noticed in the summertime all these people walking the streets that are flown in to work in the canneries, and they literally from, were from all over the world. So we decided it would be great if we could have an interaction with them and share the gospel with them. And so uh, we opened a little coffee house that we call the net. All the fish are caught by gill nets there. So somebody came up with a real catchy name, the net. And we have free internet there, free coffee, free cookies, free Bibles, free tracts. And people from all over the world come walking down the street and they see our sign saying free internet. They all want to connect with their families back home. And uh, they come in and we get to sit down and just strike up a conversation and, and uh, love them and uh, share a Bible with them, share a tract with them, talk with them about Jesus. So. 
really thankful. That started uh, in the parking lot of our little store there. That's my wife, Jane, standing there with a pickup truck, and we offered free ice cream and more, it says in the sign. And people would come up, everybody wanted ice cream, even though it was cold, they wanted an ice cream cone, and uh, they'd say, what's the more? And we would say, well, we'd like to tell you more about Jesus and, and share a Bible with you. And, uh, and then that developed into a full-time uh, coffee house where we hand out Bibles and tracts in many languages. It's been a blessing. One time a couple years ago, I saw uh, a guy from Cairo, Egypt. Here we are in Naknek, Alaska, way on the corner. There was a, a Muslim man from Cairo, Egypt, sitting at the table at the net, reading an Arabic Bible that we gave him. That was just a pretty cool experience, uh, reaching the world there in Naknek. So that's the little the net coffee house that we have. And at the net, you can not only get free coffee and free cookies, hook onto the internet for free, get a free Bible, a tract. You can also get a quilt. So there again, ladies that made quilts. Uh, there's some people there, a lot of people from uh, Central America, from the Dominican Republic, from the Philippines, and uh, it's 50 degrees in July, and they're freezing to death. And man, do they, they love quilts and hooded sweatshirts, if we have any to give away. But those quilts are really appreciated, and people share those. We have people put a pin where they're from on the map. There's people from all over the world. These are folks from uh, Africa, actually, that were there working. These are a couple guys uh, from Mongolia. These are a bunch of folks from the Philippines. We have Tagalog Bibles and Tagalog tracts to share with them in their language. Here's some ladies, I believe they were from Mexico, and they got quilts to take back to their little room where they were working in the cannery, and they really appreciated that. I don't remember where these guys were from, but just a lot of people there. Um, this is the team that came up this summer to uh, do vacation Bible school there in front of the airplane. We fly them out to these little villages, and they, we fly them out on Monday morning, and then we pick them up on Friday afternoon, and they do vacation Bible school. You all have vacation Bible school here, right, every summer? So these communities, there's no church, no um, pastor, no Sunday school for the kids to go to. So we provide in the summertime vacation Bible school. This is a, a couple from uh, the Lutheran Brethren Seminary up in Fergus Falls, Minnesota, a girl from Valley City, and then uh, Heather Hansen on the left. She uh, has been up there five summers in a row doing vacation Bible school. She loved it so much and had such a heart for the area and for the kids that she has moved there full time. She lives in Naknek now and teaches at a, a little Christian school that somebody from our church runs and also at the public school half a day. And then she does children and youth ministry in Naknek and out in the villages uh, where, they, where they can fly. This is Mark Johnson's daughter, uh, if you guys, you guys know her. So these guys flew out for a week at a time. Uh, you can pray every summer for God to raise up a team to do Vacation Bible School and pray for those that team as they go out. It's a real challenge. The first village these guys went to was the village of Ekwok. Uh, they slept on the floor of the, the little church that we go and preach at there on Sunday afternoons, and they had an outhouse, and uh, they really roughed it for a week, but they loved it there and shared the love of Jesus, and uh, these are some of the kids there in Ekwok that they had Vacation Bible School with. These are just some of the activities there at Vacation Bible School. Kids love to hear, they love to be loved on and they love to be, hear the good news of Jesus. Every village is on a river because that's kind of a mode of transportation and it's also where all the salmon run up and they can survive on the salmon that they catch out of these rivers. It's the village of Kaliganik. This was at the end of the summer. A, a couple from Washington came up and helped Heather with Vacation Bible School in the community of Leavelock. We share the Word of God with the children. So here's uh, somebody receiving a Bible, loving having a Bible in their hands. This is the church in South Naknek. If I was in Naknek today, we would have Sunday school and church, and we'd hop in a plane and fly across the river to South Naknek, and here's our church there in South Naknek. Only way to get across the river is, uh, is by air. This is a Thursday night Bible study with some uh, folks. I wish I could have time to tell you the stories of all of these people. Uh, they have some very amazing backgrounds, tough backgrounds, but Christ has reached them. 
and uh, really a joy to have Bible study with them. That's the sanctuary in South Naknek. This is the one community, Ekwok, that has a little Bible chapel. So we fly out there also on Sunday afternoons, about 50 miles away across the tundra. No other way to get there but to, to fly. So uh, we have church there on uh, Sunday afternoons. This is an aerial view of Ekwok. This is how we get there, a little 175. Sometimes they pick us up with a four-wheeler. Sometimes we walk into town to the church. Another way we get the word out is through a radio station, KAKN Radio. Can't see that real well, but that's taken from up on top of the tower. Uh, KAKN is a 24-7 FM station that broadcasts not only in Naknek and South Naknek, but also we have translators into other villages, other communities throughout Southwest Alaska. People hear good preaching and good music, Christian music there. Um, we're the only station on the FM dial. If you go to like Egegek or you go to Manakotic, you can go up and down the dial and never find a station except for KAKN. So we've got a good audience there. This is Pastor Bob Lee, not the one who used to be the president of the AFLC, but a different Bob Lee. He's the station manager there at KAKN. So you can see him there on the air, some of the programming that we do. And uh, so it, pray for the ministry of the radio station. It's really vital because there are people, again, in very remote communities, and they're hearing the gospel 24-7 uh, on the radio station. And then also a vital part of the ministry is aviation because everywhere we go, we have to fly. So this is some of the airplanes that we have there and inside of the hangar that we have. Uh, there's the, the hangar and uh, one of the planes. Um, there's a paint machine and a lawnmower being loaded in the airplane. It's uh, real practical work. And uh, here's a, a whole bunch of boxes of quilts being loaded into one of the little airplanes and flown out into the village. So again, thanks for, thanks for all the quilts. Uh, not only do we use planes to fly for services on Sundays, but to fly the VBS team out to the villages for vacation Bible school. We fly kids from some of those villages to a Bible camp a couple hours north where the children get to spend a week in a very wholesome environment. Uh, most of rural Alaska is plagued by drug abuse, alcohol abuse, uh, horrible immorality that I won't even describe to you today. It's a very dark place dark place physically in the winter time but it's very dark spiritually as well and the need the need of Christ to save souls and change lives uh, as it is everywhere is just very great in Bush Alaska uh, and it is in St. Francis right and over in Axtell and wherever wherever you are so we're thankful for aviation ministry uh, this is the plane parked in front of the Bible camp uh, lodge there in uh, the middle of Lake Clark National Park another airplane and this is the next to last slide, just, just to remind you that the real purpose of being there is proclaiming God's word uh, in, in the churches and the places that God has given us opportunity. And reaching souls. There's a precious little girl. I'll just leave that one up there. Precious gal. She really represents um, some of the great needs of Alaska. If I told you her story and her the story of her parents and siblings and uh, drug abuse, alcohol, suicide, uh, incest and so on um, some sad sad stories a lot of brokenness in Alaska the need for Christ the need for the gospel the need to reach out to people and love people and love them by sharing the truth of the gospel uh, that's what's necessary and uh, that's why we have this ministry in Alaska so thanks for your part in it and I would ask you to pray pray for the ministry pray for us uh, pray for Jeremy and uh, Lacey Kroll, who oversee the aviation ministry, Bob and Margaret Lee, who are managers at the radio station, and for Jane and I, and the pastoral side of the ministry there. And uh, we just seek to share Jesus with Southwest Alaska uh, through the preached word and just through loving relationships, building relationships with people as well. One of the things that we learned early on in uh, going to Alaska is just the brokenness, the brokenness of the people in the villages. Uh, and it's very uh, acute in southwest Alaska, but uh, it's not unique to Alaska. We live in a broken world, don't we? We live in a broken world. Uh, Pastor Luke shared that verse that I'm going to share with you again here in just a moment. This is the message I want to share with you today. Uh, hope for the last frontier. Alaska is called the last frontier. And it's a tough place, but there is hope for the last frontier. There's hope for broken people. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. 
And it's not just Bush, Alaska that has broken people. St. Francis has broken people, right? And it's no surprise because we live in a broken world. How many of you ex have experienced broken dreams, broken promises, broken relationships, broken marriages perhaps, broken families, broken lives? Uh, I'm thankful to share with you today that there's hope for the broken in Alaska and there's hope for the broken here as well. I want to share three verses about brokenness that are the great promise of God to us. First one is the one that Luke mentioned, Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Isn't that a great promise? If you've experienced brokenness in your life, I want to tell you today, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. I share that with people in Alaska that have been uh, that have experienced real brokenness, the brokenness that comes from just being far from God, that comes from alcoholism and drug addiction and broken families and broken relationships, broken health, broken lives. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. That's one of the attributes of God, isn't it, that he's always near? He's always near. So, uh, Matthew 28, verse 20, uh, Jesus said, I am, lo, I am with you always. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave you, nor will I desert you. Sometimes people feel that God is far away, or they fear, feel that they're very far from God. But we can say, can't we, based on Scripture, the Lord is near. Even somebody that runs from God, runs and runs and runs from God all of their life, when they turn around, God is right there. They don't have to run all the way back. God has been following them. The hound of heaven is after us. He wants us. He loves us. He longs to have a relationship with us. God is near to the brokenhearted. And especially when we're broken and we're hurting and we're crying out in need, God is there to hear us. It's a wonderful truth today. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. A few years ago, we met a, a gal in Naknek, uh, she was known in our community as being as being kind of the bar singer. We would we have three bars, and that the way it is, a little tiny town, hardly any stores or anything like that. But we have three bars. Go figure. And uh, you'd see signs out on the streets, and it would say live music tonight at Hadfield's Bar with Todd and Wendy Lee. Well, I met Wendy Lee one time. She was she's a singer. She's a good singer. And uh, she always sings at the bars. I was at a, uh, an NEA. We have a little electric cooperative there. And I was asked to give the, the prayer at the annual NEA meeting. And she was going to sing the national anthem. So I went out and, and prayed on the stage before. And then she was going to follow me right out with the national anthem. And uh, I, I prayed kind of a lengthy prayer. That's all. the only thing I get to do at the meeting is just have a prayer. So you ever do this, Luke? You have kind of an evangelistic prayer where you share the gospel and... Uh, in the prayer and when I walked off the stage and she was walking on to sing the national anthem and she grabbed my hand and she had tears in her face later on I met her and she told me about growing up in northern Minnesota and having a relationship with the Lord but she made some compromised decisions in her teen years that led her away from God and into some some very hurtful relationships 40 years later here she is the bar singer in Naknek Alaska God through a wonderful series of events, got a hold of her heart, and she became the worship leader in our church. And she often said, I, I, I have felt for all these years in Naknak, I have felt so far from home and so far from God. And a joy to share with her, the Lord is near. He's not far away. The Lord is near. She was so broken and brokenhearted over the direction that her life had taken and all of the consequences that had come along the way over all these years. And it was a joy for her to be reminded from the Word of God, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit. And that, that truth is true in Naknek, and it's true here in St. Francis, and it's true in your life and my life. The Lord is near. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He waits with open arms to receive us, to forgive us, uh, and to make a wonderful difference in our lives. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. But not only is God near to the brokenhearted, Psalm 51, verse 17, says God welcomes the brokenhearted. Psalm 51, verse 17, and if you know Psalm 51, that's the psalm, right, of David's confession. It's a beautiful psalm. If you haven't read it for a while, read Psalm 51. David committed adultery with Bathsheba, had her husband basically put to death. He was an accomplice to murder. 
and he sinned greatly, and yet when he was convicted by God through Nathan the prophet, and he confessed his sin in his misery and asked God to forgive him, and God forgave him and restored him. And David's confession, his beautiful confession of sin, is Psalm 51. And at the end of that psalm, he says in verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. A, a broken and a contrite heart, God will not despise. That means he won't say, nope, I despise you. I despise what you've done. I, where you've been and what you've done, I want nothing to do with it. Stay away. He won't despise the broken. Instead, he welcomes the broken. That's good news, isn't it? That God welcomes us in our brokenness. In fact, I would say, based on Psalm 51, God not only welcomes the brokenhearted, but he requires brokenness. We have to come to that point in our life, don't worry, don't we? Where we say, God, I am a sinner and I need you. I need your forgiveness. Too many people are living in pride. We're going to get to heaven by our own bootstraps or by our own efforts and by our own works. And we, we don't want to admit our sin and our need, that we are absolutely hopeless and helpless before a holy God. And we need Jesus Christ. We need what he did for us on the cross. We need his love and his mercy and his forgiveness. It's our only hope. God welcomes and even requires brokenness. We need to come to God and, and, and be broken over our sin, contrite, sorry for our sin. God requires brokenness, and he welcomes the brokenhearted. We have a friend, that picture I showed you of the, the Bible study in South Naknek, one of the guys in the back left on the row there. His name is Ted. He's known as Little Ted. There have a lot of nicknames. I could entertain you for an hour telling you the nicknames of people in, in Alaska. They have some crazy ones. Trapper Jack and Terry the Weed. You know why Terry's Terry the Weed and Flat Nose Henry and One-Armed. This, well, I don't know. Anyway, I won't get started on that. This guy's Little Ted because his dad's name is Ted, and his son's name is Ted Jr., and then he's got another grandson, Ted the Third, and so he's Little Ted. Anyway, Little Ted wasted a lot of his life, a lot of alcohol, a lot of drugs, a lot of time incarcerated, a lot of time in prison. Met him early on in the days when we were there in Naknek, and he was one who said, there is no hope for somebody like me. God could never forgive somebody like me. If you only knew the things that I've done and the things that I've said and the things that I've thought and the trail of sin and all of its consequences, you'd know that God could never receive somebody like me. I was able to share with Ted, Psalm 51, 17, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. You come to God seeking mercy and seeking help and seeking forgiveness, God will not despise you. He welcomes you. God is near to the brokenhearted, and God welcomes the brokenhearted. That's the hope for the last frontier, and that's the hope for Kansas, and the hope for everybody everywhere. Amen? The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and God welcomes the brokenhearted. And then the last thing I want to share with you is this. God can heal the brokenhearted. God can mend the brokenhearted. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. Isaiah 61, verse 1. This is that great prophecy about Jesus from Isaiah. Amazingly, 600 years before the birth of Christ. This is what God inspired Isaiah the prophet to write. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. There it is. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Do you remember when Jesus read those verses? It's one of my favorite passages in scriptures, Luke chapter 4. Jesus was in the synagogue, uh, in the temple perhaps, and he, he got up to read from the book of Isaiah, and this is the passage that he read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Jewish people had heard this prophecy of Isaiah for hundreds of years and knew that it talked about a promised Messiah, God's promise to send somebody to rescue his people. And they, and they must have thought, if you were a Jewish person, you must have thought, oh, for the fulfillment of these verses. Oh, for the day when God will send the Messiah 
Oh, for the day when God will send somebody who's anointed of God to preach good news to the poor and, and, and release to the captives and to bind up or to bring healing to the brokenhearted. Oh, for that day. Oh, for that person. Jesus read these verses from Isaiah 61, and then he sat down. And do you remember what he said? Today in your hearing, this scripture has been fulfilled. I, I wasn't there. Robin said, if I had a time machine, that's where I want to go. I want to go back to that day that Jesus quoted these verses and said, in your hearing today, these, these words are fulfilled. I think jaws must have dropped. And people, oh, what's he saying? He's the one? And Jesus was saying just that, wasn't he? I'm the one. I'm the promised Messiah. I'm the one who brings good news to the poor. I'm the one who can release the captives from sin. I'm the one who can bind up the brokenhearted. God can heal and mend the brokenhearted. God is near to the brokenhearted. God welcomes the brokenhearted. And God can mend and heal the brokenhearted. We see it in the scriptures, don't we? The wonderful testimony of the Apostle Paul, who originally was Saul, whose heart was filled with anger and hatred toward Christ and towards the people who had believed in Christ. And, and, and Saul, on the Damascus Road, met Jesus. And God healed him, mended his heart, changed his heart from a heart full of anger and hatred and bitterness and murderous intentions to a man who loved God and who loved Jesus and loved the gospel and spent his life sharing the gospel. That's amazing. That's an that's a, a incredible change of heart, incredible mending or healing of a heart. I think also of the woman who was caught in adultery. She was a broken woman, wasn't she? She was about to be broken physically because all the elders had gathered around to stone her to death because she had been caught in the very act of adultery. And do you remember what Jesus said? Whoever is without, without sin cast the first stone, and everybody dropped their stones and walked away, beginning with the oldest among them. And it was left with just Jesus and the woman. And Jesus said, who's here to condemn you? And she said, no one. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go your way and sin no more. Jesus healed that broken heart, saved her from having a, a broken body. And I just rejoice today that God heals broken hearts. Uh, there was a time when I was at Kansas State back in 1979, and I was broken over my sin. Uh, I, I grew up in a loving home went away to college and sowed my wild oats for a few months and uh, was going to a Bible study there, a Campus Crusade for Christ Bible study, and God's Word just nailed me. I was a sinner. I was so compromised in my life. I knew my parents would have been so disappointed, upset with me, the life I was living. But I was going to a Bible study just to please a friend. I joined a Bible study because he invited me to come. And in God's Word, though I had been raised in the church, God's word got through to my heart, and I realized that I could be forgiven. I could be saved, and I could know that I had the assurance of salvation. I could be forgiven of all my sin. My brokenness could be mended and could be healed. Uh, God can do that. God is near to the brokenhearted. God welcomes the brokenhearted. God can heal and mend the brokenhearted. That's the hope for the last frontier. That's the hope for Alaska. And that's the hope for you. That's the hope for me. That we have a gracious God who loved us, sent his one and only son to die for us on the cross. We can be forgiven of our sins through the blood of Jesus there at Calvary. And, and we can be made whole. We can be made well. We can be forgiven. I'm so glad to proclaim that news in the villages of southwest Alaska. There is hope for the broken, hope for rural Alaska. And there's hope for St. Francis and hope for every one of us. Praise God. Uh, today. Uh, we are privileged to share that good news in Alaska. You are privileged, blessed to know that good news and to share that good news right here in St. Francis, Kansas. So I appreciate if you would pray for Alaska. Uh, the challenges are great. The needs are great. And uh, we just pray that God would work through the ministry of the Word and the radio station, Vacation Bible School outreach, uh, the outreach at the net, our little coffee house, the giving of quilts to open people's hearts, to soften their hearts, to kind of plow the ground for the seed of the gospel to be planted. Uh, you have a real part in that through your quilts.
quilt ministry and, and through praying for us. If you ever want to come and volunteer at the net, we have many volunteers every summer that come and just bake cookies and pour coffee and uh, welcome people and talk to people about Jesus there. So there's a lot of opportunities to pray, uh, perhaps even to come, continue to send quilts. Uh, you're a part uh, of good news, hope, uh, for the last frontier. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to be here at uh, Peace Lutheran today. Thank you for Pastor Luke and his family. Bless their ministry here. All the folks that are here this morning, Lord, you know us. You love us. You have a wonderful plan to uh, bring us unto yourself and to make us whole in Christ. And uh, you long to do that same thing in Alaska. Pray your blessing upon the ongoing ministry uh, there as well. We rejoice in you, God, that you are uh, not a God who's far off, but a God who's near. Uh, to the broken. You welcome the broken. You bring healing and bring salvation and bring forgiveness to the broken. And uh, that is grace, the grace of God. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Please stand as we clo close our service with hymn number 513, a song that is definitely fitting after that message, Jesus, What a Friend for Sinners. 513.
please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction from the 67th Psalm, where it says, God be gracious to us, and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us, that thy ways may be known on the earth, thy salvation among all the nations. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.